When you were growing up, was there a room in your house that, for no explainable reason, you were absolutely terrified of? In my case, it was my grandmother's pantry, just a little room off to the side of the kitchen. But nobody could open that door if I was anywhere near it. Now, guess what the theme of tonight's story is, my dear friends? <laughs> Another great one from Dr. Creepin's Vault. The subreddit I set up so you could share your stories directly with me. And it's a real treat, I can tell you. So, you know what time it is. It's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink. And listen. The woman sat in the chilly upstairs room of her two-story house, where she kept her computer. She stared at its blank screen waiting for some sort of inspiration to hit. It usually came in sporadic bursts of typing, with long intervals of blank staring. She merely sat and waited for it to come. Of course, it always did come, though sometimes it took a long time and sometimes it didn't. Sometimes she feared it never would, and she would just sit in front of the screen staring at it and waiting for while life slipped by unnoticed. Other times she feared something else might come instead, like the hand that she kept feeling lightly touch her shoulder, or the face in the mirror, or worse still, the figure emerging from behind her. But that was all in her head, of course. At least, that was what everyone kept telling her. But lately, she started to wonder if that was true. She hated the upstairs computer room, as they called it. It was a small room with a little addition on the back of it. Her stepfather had put it on, and then nailed a thick jean quilt between the two rooms. He had done this because the addition had never been finished, and there was no insulation on the walls. It got so cold that she often became afraid that she would simply freeze solid in her chair, fingers poised above the keyboard, ready but never moving. The computer room was originally a bedroom. <laughs> okay, it was still a bedroom, but now it was an extra bedroom slash computer room. It contained a desk with a computer on it, an open closet, a window, a bed, and, of course, the addition. The blanket wasn't so bad. It was the mirror next to the screen that frightened her late at night when her parents lay nestled in bed and the house was deathly silent. She would sit there waiting for inspiration to hit her, and her eyes would drift to the right of the screen and settle on the reflection of that blanket hanging in the doorway. Then she would stare at it until she would see a bone-thin hand curl its withered black fingers around the edge of the blanket, and she would jerk her eyes back to the screen and shiver. After that, she began turning music on as she typed. It helped, if only a little. She'd always had a hard time with horror flicks. She loved watching them, but she hated it too. It was hard to explain. She did like to watch them, but there were always the nightmares afterwards. She would lie in the dark when it was over and shudder with fear. It was always a little better if she was at home, because well, then she could cuddle up close to her little dog. Feeling his comforting warm body next to her always dispelled some of the mind-numbing fear. It seemed to bring her somewhat back to reality. But when she was at her sister's house, or staying the night at one of her four aunt's houses, it was a lot different. She would often be alone in one of the extra bedrooms, or on the couch in the seething darkness. Her sister loved to watch scary movies with her, and then afterwards she would lie awake on the couch underneath the big window, wishing to God that sleep would come soon. Of course, this didn't help at all with the growing fear of the mirror and the blanket in the computer room. She would imagine all sorts of horror movie monsters lurking behind it, waiting for her to turn her back to them, so they could drag her back there. In the light of day, 
She would tell herself she was being silly and to quit imagining things. But come dark, she always typed quickly. She would often ask herself why, if she was so afraid of that room, did she insist on using it? The obvious reason was that her computer was in it. There were two computers owned by her family, the downstairs computer, which was everybody's to use, and her computer, that she'd bought with her own money. It would have been easy to move to a new room in the house, but the only other place it would fit in was in the back room downstairs, but that was where the family computer was set up. She might even have put it in her own room, but her PlayStation was in there, and there was no room or a plug for both, and so she was stuck with it in the extra bedroom. She could also type in the morning instead of at night, and that was really the only time of day she wasn't busy, and she couldn't just give up on typing. It was her passion. She loved it more than anything else. And besides, she felt strangely compelled to the room, and repulsed by it at the same time. She felt the need to go into it at night, even though her mind screamed at her to just leave it alone. It wasn't just constantly seeing the mirror out of the corner of her eye that concerned her. It was all the little things in the room that added up to her growing alarm. It gave her chills just thinking about it. The first thing that happened was when her nephew slept in it one night. This was before her computer had been put in there. He told her it happened just before he fell asleep. You know, right before you drop off into dreamland. He said he felt a slight pressure on his right shoulder, like someone had lightly put a hand on it. He was instantly awake, but no one was there. He never slept in that room again. He used the futon in her mum's craft room instead. The second thing to happen was the chair. She put one of those big backed roller chairs in the room for her computer, and then she started to notice that, no matter where the chair was facing when she left the room, it was always facing the window, which was directly across from the door, when she walked back in. After that, things began to fall into place a little quicker. She began to hear funny noises, like whispers. She started seeing things out of the corner of her eye. And most recently, she started seeing that bow thin hand curling around the edge of the blanket. Of course, the hand was never there when she turned around. After all, there are no such things as demons or ghosts, if that was really what they were. I mean, come on, who believes in that crap anyways? <laughs> she did. The girl's eyes slowly drifted to the right again, and she suddenly stiffened. It was in the mirror. That horribly thin, black face with tiny red eyes sunk into the sockets. The face floated above her right shoulder, and she leapt from the chair, banging her hip hard against the keyboard as she whirled around, ready to sprint to the door. There was nothing there. She laughed uneasily as she sat back down nervously batting a lock of curly blonde hair from her face. Okay, she thought. Just getting a little tired, that's all. Her thigh throbbed when she sat, and she knew there would be an ugly bruise there in the morning. She sighed, slumped back on the chair, and closed her eyes for a second. When she opened them again, she felt a bolt of horror run through her. The screen had gone black, and red words had begun to scroll across it. We're waiting for you. She instantly jammed the keyboard in and stood up, intent on leaving and never coming back. But as she went to the door, it suddenly slammed shut in her face. She stood for a second, unbelieving. Okay, that was weird, she said aloud and winced as the room seemed to absorb the sound of her words. She took a deep breath and reached for the door handle, savagely twisting and yanking on it when it didn't move. 
Is it locked? She wondered. It can't be locked. There is no lock. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw the computer screen flash. She turned around to look at it. The words had changed from We're waiting for you to What's wrong? Don't you want to play with us? Okay, 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 the girl thought. This isn't happening. It can't be happening. She took a deep breath and sat down cautiously at the computer, staring at the words. They had changed again. So you do want to play? A small prompt blinked below the words. Shivering, she pulled out the keyboard and gently placed her hands on the keys, index fingers lightly touching the small dents on the letters J and F. The room seemed to swim for a second, and she blinked rapidly until it righted itself. Steady, she thought. Steady. Swallowing hard, she typed. Play what? A couple of seconds passed, and a new line of text drifted across the screen. Hide and seek. She wasn't scared. She was terrified. But she closed her eyes and steadied herself again, telling herself that none of this was real. She'd merely fallen asleep in the chair. It was all just a dream. She opened her eyes and her hands fluttered across the keyboard. Who are you? The response was almost instant. Fifty. Half a second. Forty-nine. Half a second. Forty-eight. Her eyes widened. 47. It was counting down. 46. What happened when it reached zero? 45. Hide and seek. 44. Suddenly it clicked. 43. It wanted to play hide and seek. 42. And it wanted her to play. 41. Whether she wanted to or not. You should hide now, she thought. Thirty-nine. She stood up and backed away from the computer. Thirty-eight. Almost tripped over the chair. Thirty-seven. She looked wildly around the room. Thirty-six. She had to hide. Thirty-five. But what happens when it finds me? Thirty-four. Her heart beat furiously in her chest. Thirty-three. Oh, God, where should she hide? Thirty-two. Her breath quickened. Thirty-one. The closet? Thirty. No, the door had been taken off long ago. Twenty-nine. Under the bed? Maybe, but was she fit? Twenty-seven. Under the desk? Twenty-six. It would find her for sure. Twenty-five. The addition? Twenty-four. No, she couldn't go in there. Twenty-three. She just couldn't. She bent down and looked under her bed. Twenty-one. Nothing. Then she got on her stomach. Twenty. And tried to wedge herself under. Nineteen. The metal base jammed into her shoulder. Eighteen. She was too big. Seventeen. She stood up and looked around wildly, her terror, sixteen, threatening to choke her, fifteen. The addition was the only place she could go, fourteen. She couldn't just stand here, thirteen, 
and wait for it to find her. Twelve. Oh, God help me. Eleven. Please, don't make me go in there. Ten. Her fear was irrational. Nine. There was nothing in there. Eight. But her own imagination seven, and a pile of junk, six, she backed towards the quilt, five, reached out behind her, four, her hand touched its rough surface, three, she gripped it, two, yanked it aside, and stepped back. Zero. Let it fall before her eyes as she glimpsed the words on the computer. Ready or not, here I come. Before the quilt slid before her eyes, she found herself staring at it. Framed against the light, it was hard to see detail but she saw enough. It was tall, its head almost touching the doorframe, its skin reflecting the light from the bedroom, almost making it glow with demonic energy. It stepped towards her, its outline shivering somehow. She stepped back, stumbled over something, and fell. She kept falling, falling through the dark. It pressed in on her from all sides, suffocating her. With a thud, she hit the floor. Dazed for a minute, she lay there, blinking away the pain. Suddenly, she realized there was no light. The quilt had fallen back into place. But there should be light around the edges of the quilt. Yet, there was nothing but the soft velvet of black all around her. She sat up and the floor creaked. She froze. Had that been her? The floor creaking as she had sat up. It came again, this time from the left of her. That hadn't been her. What if it was in here with her? What if it was just waiting for her to move and give away her position? She had to get out, had to get out of here before it came for her. Fear fluttered in her chest again. Something moved behind her. She could feel it moving, sliding through the dark like a hot knife through butter. It melted her fear away to free the panic waiting beneath. She scrambled to her feet and began to stumble about the room, looking for a wall, or better yet, the quilt. Strange objects jammed into her sides, and she tripped and fell, scraping her hands on something sharp. Banging her knees and elbows, she fought her way forward. How could it move so quietly through this mess? Suddenly, her hand hit something slimy, and she jerked away. Turning away from it, she stumbled forward. The need to get out became more urgent, and she hit her side on something sharp and hard, hissing in pain. She stopped and grabbed her side, feeling a wetness beginning to spread. A pair of bright, yellow eyes opened before her, and she suddenly forgot about the pain. The eyes widened, opening into deep pits of darkness, darker even than that which surrounded her. She felt mesmerized by them, Compelled to step into their darkness, to step inside them and never look back. She tried to resist it, knowing if she gave in to that impulse that she would never walk out of the room alive. She pulled away from the eyes, but it hurt to do so. It felt like claws digging into her mind, forcing her to look back. She barely turned away when she did feel claws. There on her arm, 
dragging her back into those terrible eyes. She felt long strips of flesh being torn away as they clung desperately to her. She sucked in a deep breath and with one last effort wrenched herself from their eager grasp. She squeezed her eyes shut and reached out behind her. She felt the heavy weight of the quilt beneath her fingers and tore it back excitedly, a shout of victory rising in her throat. The cry died on her lips as she stares into... The girl sat up suddenly. Sweat was dripping down her spine, yet she was as cold as ice. Was this what a chill sweat felt like? She shuddered. Oh, what was wrong with her? Her sleep-blurred vision began to clear, and the sweat froze, leaving little ice trails down her back. This wasn't her bed. This wasn't her room. She closed her eyes and let the chill sweep through her again. Oh, what had happened last night? She could barely remember a thing. She'd been sitting at the computer, working on her latest story when... <laughs> Her eyes flew open. The computer. She was in the computer room. Dashing from the bed, she rushed over to it. It was still running, but the screen was blank. No words. Relief flowed through her. Her tense muscles relaxed, and she realized she'd been expecting something to be there. As the initial shock passed, she began to wonder. She ended up in the bed. Think back. Think back. What had happened last night? Her thoughts swirled around as she tried to make sense of them. The computer. It had to be something to do with the computer. She'd been trying to come up with the next chapter to her story when, suddenly, words, words had begun scrolling across the screen. Then they'd begun to count down. She had gone scared and had she stopped, turned around, the quilt. She'd gone behind it to hide from, from something. An image suddenly comes to mind. She is standing in the dark behind the quilt, little streams of light flicking around the edges of the blanket, her hand pulling it back, long, dark claws jutting from the black fleshed fingers. The light flickers again and goes out. She is alone, only she is not. There is something on the other side of the quilt, and it's coming to get her. She shakes her head, bringing herself back from the memory, a memory she can't quite grasp. Gratefully, she lets it slide away instead. She walked over to the door, her eyes never leaving the quilt. She was sure that, once she looked away, it would be there, waiting for her. She reached out for the handle, but stopped. It was locked. She knew it was. It had been locked before, and it would be locked again. She would be stuck in this room, playing cat and mouse with this monster forever. Or at least, until it finally caught her. Pulling herself together, she grabbed the handle. It was ice cold in her palm, sealing her skin to its hollow metal surface, forever trapping her within its world. Tears formed in the corner of her eyes as she twisted it, afraid it would shatter in her hand, but even more afraid it would devour her with its cold, turning her very insides to ice. <sighs> It wasn't locked. She's shaking with relief, and somehow she finds the ability to laugh. But the laugh comes out wrong. It sounds like a madman laughing at the world, comfortable in his delusions. She pulls the door open. It is heavy in her hand. She looks out into the hallway, but the hallway isn't there. She screams. Oh. 
I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. If you don't know where that's from, then it's probably for the best. <laughs> okay, see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>